Once they shoot a film, they transfer the film to video. In the 50s, video, black and white at that time, was 30 frames a second. So what the uh, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, SMPTE, S -M -P -T -E, what they did was they numbered each frame so that they could synchronize audio machines with the video machines. Well, there are two kind of SMPTE. There's VITSI, which is Vertical Interval Time Code, and LTC, Longitudinal or Linear Time Code. Vertical Interval Time Code is for editing video. Now, in video, the picture is never on your television screen all at the same time. Each frame has two fields. There's an odd field and an even field. It's drawn on there with lines. And what there used to be was a gun in the back that would scan the odd lines and then the even lines, and that would make the whole picture. Did you ever see when your video picture loses sync and you got the black line in the middle? They don't do that too much anymore, but they sure used to a lot. That's the vertical interval. In that vertical interval are all the sync pulses that tell the gun when to go up and do the next lines. That's where they put the numbers in the vertical interval. So if this frame is 2 minutes and 22 seconds and 3 frames into the picture, then that's the number that's going to be on that frame. This way we could then edit the video at the beginning of that frame. When we punch in the computer and say, okay, we're going to make an edit at such and such a time code number, that means that it better be at the beginning of that frame and not in the middle of that frame, because if it's in the middle of that frame, you're going to get a positive field against a positive field. Remember, because there's two fields per second in a video frame. We have to have a positive field and the negative field, and the positive and then the negative field. And if you get a positive field against a positive field, then it's going to lose sync and roll. Well, in audio, LTC, it's not that critical. We just record it on the audio track right alongside. We record it on, with nothing on the tape. We record those numbers. The same numbers that's on the videotape, we record them on the audio tape. It's a, it's a digital signal. Now we can take the numbers from the videotape, the numbers from the audio tape, put them into a magic black box. The magic black box reads those numbers. Had two cables going out. One cable went to the DC servo controlled motor of the video machine, and the other line went out to the DC servo controlled motor of the audio machine. This black box is going to read the numbers from each of those machines and it's going to regulate the voltage going to both the video machine and the audio machine until those numbers match. Once those numbers match, it locks the voltage in and those machines will stay synchronous because this black box was constantly reading the numbers and keeping it so. When a film would come in, they would come in complete and we would make the reels. We had a film chain in the back where we had a 35 millimeter projector shooting into this uh, mirror set up onto a one-inch Sony video machine. And there were also two or three three-quarter-inch machines in that rack and two or three half-inch machines, I forget exactly how many, and also a 24-track tape recorder in that room. So what we would do is put the film on the film chain. In the process of transferring to the first 10-minute reel, we would have the uh, SMPTE machine on, putting the same SMPTE numbers on the video and track 24 on the audio and the same SMPTE numbers on the audio track of the three-quarter inch video and the same SMPTE numbers on the audio track of the half-inch videos. Each reel would be approximately 10 minutes. When you're rewinding and winding going back and forth, you're not waiting three minutes or four minutes to get to the other end of the tape. That three minutes or four minutes, just in rewind and fast forward, can cost hours. The other reason we used to do this is that I could have this crew go work on that part of the film and this crew go work on that part of the film and that crew in another room to work on that part of the film. I'm going to give you the three-quarter inch video and the blank 24 track that's got the time code that matches real one and you're going to go in the studio, you're going to put that tape on the 24 track machine in your control room and you're going to put the three-quarter inch video in the video unit and you're going to take the SMPTE time code from both of them and make sure that they're running synchronous through your sync-em-up box, okay? 
And now you can start work. You're looking at the picture, you see the gunshot, boom, you put the gunshot on track 17 of the 24 track. And they're running synchronous. And now we do the footsteps on track 20. And we do the door carbides on track 20. And we do the ambiences on track 9 and 10. 10 or 12 hours later, you got all the sounds for that 10 minute video. Next, the next 10 minute reel. With its own 24 track, with the matching time code, and its own three quarter inch work tape with the matching time code that you're now going to put in and hopefully, you know, get some coffee and go for the next 12. 